With the inductor, sir, these are the number of terms we can say about terms. And uh, within it, then, the entire slot is what we call as a coil, sir. Same name. So you find that if this is the transformer, we have sub two categories of transformers or the categories. And we say that uh, these two categories we have the step up and the step down transformers. These ones are used to reduce the amount of voltage rate being supplied. Reduce the voltage, the voltage rate. For example, and this one is to increase or to boost it up. Increase the voltage range. For example, we are at all carry where you are generating power. So when you are generating the power, maybe you are generating the power at maybe a hundred kilowatts. Now, or, or even a hundred kilovolts being generated. Now you want to transmit, okay? During transmission, let's say here this is the transmission. As you transmit, this value will be boosted you will have to use what is called a step up transformer. In order to boost it up. So you can boost this one maybe to 200 kilovolts during transmission. Because some, some, some voltages might be lost due to frictions, due to other circumstances that uh, might arise, maybe the type of conducting wires that have been used during the transmission and so on. So when it reaches now the client or the customer, customer section, they are always done what is called step down. So you have to step down. Because within the clan head, you have some small devices such as mobile phones being used. Mobile phones, you have things like uh, maybe radios, refrigerators, and so on. So these things always you find that they use amount up to 240 feet. And uh, things like mobile phones can even use 5V, or even the batteries that we are charging can even use 2.5V. Uh, others 1.5 and so on. So these devices mostly uh, use what is called the low voltage. And because you need the low voltage, then you will use the step down transformer during the dropping so that it drops the value from 200 kilovolts to 250. Then these devices also have what are called resistors in them. That's why you need the charger. We need the charger inside there we have the resistors which keeps also to reduce it until it is smaller. Okay? That it meets these standards. So all that you need what is called now the inductors. Because it's the inductor that really helps in terms of this coil, coils. So what is an inductor? You can say that an inductor is a coil of insulated wire. It's a coil of an insulated wire that may or may not be over 
that may or may not be over the various method. Various method. So how does this inductor work? So you say that uh, when a coil is connected, when a coil is connected to a circuit, when a coil is connected to a circuit, when a coil is connected to a circuit, the flow of current through, the flow of current through the coil, the flow of current through the coil forces the electromagnetic forces the forces the electromagnetic fields forces the electromagnetic fields to be created in the coil to be created in the coil opposing the direction opposing the direction of the applied current opposing the direction of the applied current so you say that the effect is that the effect is that the effect is that the current fast applied the current fast applied to be created to the first applied to the to the inductor first applied to the inductor seems to have seems to have a very high resistance seems to have a very high resistance reducing the current reducing the current flow using the current flow using the current flow <coughs> so you say that uh, the inductor the unit for inductor is n the unit for inductor is N related as capital H. Factors 
inductors affecting inductors. Number one, you talk about the wire thickness. We have to look at the key uh, terminologies being used in electric circuits. And uh, the terminologies that are highly examinable include uh, uh, terms like magnetic flux and magnetic flux density. We have what are called magnetic flux. Uh, whose symbol is this one. So, first of all, what is the magnetic flux? So, you can write that uh, it is the amount of magnetic field, the amount of magnetic field 
uh, produced from a magnetic source. It's the amount of magnetic field produced uh, from a magnetic source. If you have some magnetic field, we say that, uh, assume that you have maybe the magnetic materials and there is a lot of concentration at this point. So this point is where we say that it is the magnetic field. Or the electric field. So what you get there, or the magnetic field uh, that is now being generated from this electric field, is what they call us the magnetic flux. So what is the unit used for measuring the magnetic flux? So the unit for magnetic flux, you say that unit for magnetic flux is the Weber. Weber. Abbreviated as capital V, capital W, then small v. Then the second uh, term that we have is what is called uh, magnetic flux density. Magnetic flux density, uh, which is uh, abbreviated as B. So that is the second one. So, what is magnetic flux density? Uh, is the amount of flux existing within a defined area? Is the amount of flux existing in a defined area, meaning that, i.e., we can rewrite this in an equation format that uh, since it is beta, magnetic flux density is equivalent to amount of magnetic flux which is this one over the area so that is the equation that we can use so the unit for magnetic flux density is tesla measured as t it's tesla Example, let us look at an example with the calculation. A magnetic field of flux, a magnetic field of flux 30 milliweber covers an area of covers an area of 50 square meters. Fifty square meters. Square centimeters, square centimeters, so square centimeters. Find the flux density. Find the flux density of the field find the flux density of the field. Find the flux density of the field. So from our calculation of the definition of flux density, we say that uh, magnetic flux density is equivalent to magnetic flux divided by the area. So what is the magnetic flux? Uh, is 30. 30 milliweber, we have to convert it to SI unit. So these are milli. 
So convert mil into meters. We be times 10 raised power negative. Yes, 50 square centimeters is equivalent to 50 multiplied by 10 raised power negative 4. Now from there, using the power of indices, eh? negative 3 divided by negative 4 is the same as negative 3 minus minus 4, right? What do you get? It's positive 1, right? So it will be positive 1. Therefore, it will be 30 over 50 times 10 raised power 1. See that? Uh, what do you get? 3 times 10 is 30. 30 divided by 5? 6. Yes, sir. So that is the value for that. The next term that is used is what is called reluctance. Reluctance. Reluctance, related as capital S. It is the magnetic resistance of a particular magnetic circuit. It is the magnetic resistance of a particular magnetic circuit. The presence of the presence of magnetic flux. The presence of magnetic flux. So when you are getting some magnetic field of a particular circuit that you have, under the presence of the magnetic flux, then that is what we call as the reluctance. And uh, you will find that uh, it is from the reluctance that we use to categorize magnetic materials to either magnetic or non-magnetic. Non -magnetic. Uh, let's look at another term called magnetic motive force inside brackets, MMF. It's the effect produced by the coil that depends on the current flowing is the effect of magnetic fields produced by the coil. Is the effect of magnetic fields produced by the coil that depends on that depends on the current flowing. That depends on the current flowing in the coil and the number of turns. And the number of turns. Therefore, i.e., MMF is equivalent to the current flowing multiplied by the number of turns that you have within the, the coils. Therefore, given this one, then we can express magnetic flux. Eh? Magnetic flux to be equivalent to the magnetic motive force over the reluctance. The reluctance. Therefore, we know the symbol for magnetic flux, which is this, equivalent to MMF, over the reluctance. What is the, the, the symbol for reluctance? It's capital S. As the equation. Having ended that, then I want us to look at energy stored on an inductive circuit. Energy stored on 
energy stored energy stored in inductive circuits so you can write that uh, this is the energy stored in a coil is the energy stored in a coil Is the energy stored in the coil having constant inductance L? Having constant inductance L Hendrix. L Hendrix. And carrying a current and carrying a current of I. Amperes. I'm carrying a current of I amperes. It is given by the formula work done or energy. You can say that energy, which is the rate of doing work, is equivalent to a half multiplied by the inductance, then multiplied by the current square. Then the value is measured in joules, since it is energy. Example. That a coil has a resistance, a coil has Resistance of 16 ohms and an inductance of and an inductance of three Henry's and an inductance of three Henry's. It is connected to a 40. It is connected to a 40 volts, which is direct current, which is 40 volts. Calculate the energy stored. Calculate the energy stored. In the magnetic field, when the current reached the steady value, when the current reached a steady value, when the current reached a steady value. So, the, qu the main question is for you to calculate the energy. And we know that energy is given by the formula a half inductance times current squared. So, first of all, we have to calculate our current, which we have not been given. So, current is given by voltage divided by the resistance. Do we have the resistance and voltage? Yes. Therefore, we take 40 divided by 16. What does it give you? Two point. And you confirm the calculator. Ampias. Is it the value?
Now, since we are asked to calculate the energy, then we can now say energy is given by a half L or reductance times current square. Now we have our current and we have our inductance. Therefore, we can compute the value times the inductance, which is 3 Henry's, times our current, which is 2.5 squared. So what is the value that you get? 9 point something. What's the value? 9.375. So right there, 9.375 joules. So that is the energy stored for that particular. Now, Title Transformers. Transformers. So, have you ever seen a transformer? You know what's a transformer? You've ever used it? Do you know what's a transformer? You used it when? Huh? Where did you use a transformer? Unayona too. Or uh, do you know each one? Eh? So in the village, when you are told that the transformer has collapsed, so there is no power. So come on. See that you are not talking. Okay, but it's up. So what can you define for me as a transformer? Now tell me what it is in English. It's an electronic device used to supply electricity. <laughs> okay. You can see. Yeah, Ponigan. Oh, just any device used to transfer or to transmit. Yes. In supply. Okay. I hope this might be for singing. So say this, it is an AC or an alternating current. It's an AC. AC means alternating current. It's an altern alternating current electromagnetic device. Electromagnetic device that takes in energy. It accepts the energy. It takes in energy. On one side. Takes in energy. On one side. Takes in energy. On one side. Inside brackets, primary. It 
inside brackets, primary, and delivers and delivers it onto another, and delivers it onto another, delivers it onto another. Inside brackets, secondary. Usually at, usually at different voltage, at different voltage, usually at different voltage. So, this can be a demonstration of how Transformer looks like that. Then we have uh, this other side. This is Vs in the secondary section, and this is the voltage in the primary section. So this one is what we call it as the primary winding. Primary winding. It's a coil that has been winding. Yeah. Then this one we call it a soft iron. Then this section here we call it a secondary winding. Secondary winding. Now, how do we relate this? When computing, maybe the total uh, amount of uh, voltage is being generated at current. So when using this, uh, we say that the relationship between the primary side and the secondary side is equivalent to the number of turns in that section over there number of turns in the secondary section where where so this one is equivalent to n so just write this equation huh? then we are going to see what all stands for vp stands for primary winding primary winding Vs means secondary wind voltage. Secondary voltage. Next is uh, TP. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, right. We have TP. TP means number of turns in the primary wind number of turns in primary in the primary windings and Vs is the number of turns in secondary windings N equals to the turns ratio. The turns ratio, which is given as TP over TS. Uh, 
can also say that the current in the primary winding section over the current then supplied in the secondary uh, winding section is equivalent to the number of turns in the secondary windings over the number of turns in the primary windings which is equivalent to the ratio of 1 to m as another equation you can say that equation 2 and the other one equation 1 where IP is the primary current primary current IS is the secondary current secondary current so let us look at an example that we can use in order to let the current voltages and the number of turns being applied within the transformer section. So we can look at an example here. So say example. Then we say that uh, the primary voltage, the primary voltage and the secondary current of the transformer the primary voltage and secondary current and secondary current of a transformer having turns ratio of Turns ratio of 50 to 1 are 200 V and 1.5 amperes and 1.5 amperes respectively respectively so this one is 200 this one is 1.5 amperes. Calculate the secondary voltage. Calculate the secondary voltage. Calculate the secondary voltage and the primary current. And the primary current. Primary current. So, from this equation here, we say that IP over IS equals to TS over T, which is equivalent to 1 over M. But for the first equation here is that VP over VS equals to TP over TS, which is equivalent to M, where N is the ratio. Now, we can equate the VP and VS which we have to our N using this first equation. Because the second equation will help us to get what? The current. You can see here. This one helps you to get the number of turns and the voltages. Now, to solve that, then we can say that. Uh, this is the solution. Then you identify all those values. VP equals to 200 V. IS equals 1.5 uh, current. So here we have VP. VP over VS equals to TP over TS, which is equivalent to M. So from here we can just pick VP, which is the voltage in the primary windings, over the secondary voltage to be equivalent to N. Now given this, then 
we can equate only VP over VS equals to 50 over 1. So what is VP? We were given the value of VP here, yeah, the 200 over VS, right? It's equivalent to 50 over 1. So from here, cross multiply, right? This one gets there, this one gets this one. So this one is 1. So from here, we can now have that uh, Vs times 50 equals 200 times 1. Now, to remain with Vs, we have to divide both sides by 50. By 50. Therefore, Vs equals this one. So it is 4. Okay. So voltage in the secondary windings is for B. We assume that now here it was 200 B. Now the secondary here will be 4 B. Now the next part is now for us now to compute the amount of uh, current. Eh? in the primary windings using this formula here that IP over IS is equivalent to 1 over IP. and here we have the first uh, value of our So here we can use now the current. We can get the current. We shall have IP over IS to be equivalent to 1 over N. So what is our IP? Our IP value is to the pair in the IS. So IP over IS which is 1.5 is equivalent to 1 over 50. Therefore IP times 50 is equivalent to 1.5 times 1. Divide both sides by 50 to get IP current in the primary windings to be equivalent to do that 1.5 times 1 Divide by 50. 0 .0 0 0.03 amperes. Current is measured in amperes. Now, the question was. Calculate the secondary voltage and the primary current. Secondary voltage and the primary current. So this one and this one has been sorted out. So the answer is that uh, secondary voltage secondary voltage Vs equals to 4 V and primary current equals IP equals to 0 0.2 equals to 0 0.03 as the answer. Next is transformer efficiency. We look at transformer efficiency. Because uh, 
these transformers without checking on their efficiency, then you will be having a lot of uh, challenges with the power. And so, sometimes it cuts short, sometimes uh, just uh, disconnects when you are expecting to receive the, the power from the house. And you see all of a sudden there is a blackout. You finish writing? Yeah. Now, let us look at transformer efficiency. How do we achieve efficiency when it comes to transformer? So transformer efficiency. So you say that the this, is, this assumes that the efficiency of the ID, like that, that, this assumes that the efficiency of an ideal transformer is 100%. It assumes that the efficiency of an ideal transformer is 100%. That means that there is no power losses, okay? There is no current leakage or any other thing. Meaning that the input power is equivalent to the output power. That means that the input power is equivalent to the output output power. That means that now everything is a hundred percent. But we achieve that. Any gadget must have some uh, defective, effectiveness. Eh? Sometimes it's 98 percent, 99 percent. You can't. Uh, that's why we say that practically you will find that a good transformer or any other gadget that they are producing ranges from 96% or 96%. If it is not 96% efficient and above, then it is not. That's why you can see AstraZeneca and Freiman being used for COVID-19 vaccine. But those others still they are way it's not much effective yeah so based on the testing and the practical approaches then you can write the system so you can say that now in short that efficiency is equivalent to output power over input power multiplied by a hundred percent in order to get the efficiency in percentage rate. Now the last part of transformer is what is called so that is when you are given any question compute the efficiency of the machine you have to deal with the output power divided by the input power and multiply it by a half and a hundred. Now let us look at impedance. Impedance or resistance ratio. the below given the below two transformers transformer faces so I will give this
given that way, this is the resistance. And this is the resistance. Sister in the primary winding, and here is sister in the secondary winding. So say that with the load resistance, with the load resistor RS, with the load, with the load resistor RS, across its secondary, across its secondary, across its secondary then looking into then looking into the primary then looking into the primary then looking into the primary an input resistor RP is observed is observed with an equivalent of RS with an equivalent of RS is observed with an equivalent of RS with the value with an equivalent of the value of RS when transferred to the primary when transferred to the primary this RS and RP when you transfer this to the primary, then it is equivalent to the RS. So right here, therefore, the ratio, the ratio RP over RS is the impedance, is the impedance, is the impedance or is the impedance or resistance ratio is the impedance or resistance ratio of a transformer of a transformer now RP is equivalent to VP over IP that the resistor of the primary winding is equivalent to the voltage in the primary winding divided by the current in the primary winding because we know that resistance is equivalent to voltage divided by current and uh, what about RS um, RS equals to Voltage in the secondary winding divided by the current in the secondary winding. So given that way, then the ratio, the ratio of RP to RS will be equivalent to, now in these terms, RP is given by VP over IP is equivalent to VP over IP divided by VS over IS. So if given that way then what will be the results? RP over RS is equivalent to this multiplied by the inverse of this VP over IP multiplied by IS over VS. Now, 
if we have that, how do we relate with the characters? So you can say that uh, otherwise, otherwise, with RP over otherwise RP over RS is equivalent to VP over RS IP IP over IP which is equivalent times this is times IS over VS which is also equivalent to VP over IP, VP over VS, let us divide the voltage as such. Voltage in the primary over the voltage in the secondary, multiplied by what will it be? IS over IP. The opposite, yeah. which is equivalent to the number of turns times the number of turns in the secondary. From the primary multiplied by the number of turns in the secondary, which will give you n squared. Eh? Because n times n gives you n squared. Therefore, the final impedance ratio will be given by the final impedance ratio will be given by Rp over Rs is equivalent to n squared. It's equivalent to n squared. So this is the last equation. Now, from here I want us now to look at an example. The last example to end this topic. Uh, before we look at the final part, which is transformer matching. Now, using this example, let us look at the question that if RS, if RS is equivalent to 100 ohms, and the turns ratio, and the turns ratio, N is 2 to 1. It's two to one. Then, 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 looking into primary, the transformer resistance will be seen as. Then, looking into primary, the transformer resistance will be seen as a question mark. Now, how do we compute that in that section? So we know that uh, from our equation, we have said that RP, we have said that RP over RS is equivalent to N squared, right? Yeah. Now, what happens to this uh, step? Uh, <coughs> RP is not known. That is what we are looking for. We are looking for. RS is given as a hundred. Is equivalent to two over one squared. Therefore, this times this will be RP times one square equals to a hundred times two square. So given that way, we can now compute the final value for that section. Therefore, RP, one square is one, so it is RP which is equivalent to 100 times 2 squared is 4. So it is 100 
times 4, giving us that RP equals to 400 ohms resistance. 400 ohms resistance. The last part of this topic and transformer is what is called the transformer match. Transformer match, which I want us to. How do we match two transformers facing one another? Is what we have to look at. to do is to match the equivalent things like resistance in this side with the resistance there current the current of the other side number of turns and the number of turns on the other side so that is what will enable us to get a consistent and an equal uh, values so here we can just say that uh, Given two transformers, eh? this is A and B. So you can draw that, represent the two transformers. You can draw this, represent the two transformers. This is transformer. Transformer A. And this is transformer. Which one is a step down and a step up transform? So this one is a step up because it has a larger number of turns. Step up transformer. And this one is a step down transformer. Because the number of turns that you have at the end determines the amount of voltage and current being current. You can see even from the calculation, since the second that winding here, RS, had 100 volt ohms resistance, the primary one had 4,000. So the number of turns uh, determines a lot when it comes to transformer values. So here, how many number of turns are here? Two. N equals to two. And here, N equals to one, two, three, four, four. say that under this eh, say that you must write that you must ensure matching you must ensure matching between you must ensure matching between a load and an output a load and an output a load and an output an 
output stage. On an output stage or between or between two stages or between two stages of circuit, the transformer is sometimes used or between two stages of the circuit. The transformer is sometimes used. The transformer is sometimes used as a coupling device. As a coupling device. A device that can be used to match. Because we always have, when you're talking about distributed systems, you talk about tightly coupled and loosely coupled uh, items, so which you might it's not by your level. So when you be dealing with the distributed systems in higher levels or deal with the ABMA system, then you will be able to have such issues. Let us look at an example here that if an amplifier is feeding a load speaker, if an amplifier, you remember we said that an amplifier circuit is used to amplify, right? So the same thing is here, either the use of amplifier, right? Yes. Now you say that uh, if an amplifier is feeding a loudspeaker as shown in the figure 2.3 above. So this is your figure 2.3 above. With the amplifier having an output, with the amplifier having an output, output impedance of, output impedance of 1000 ohms. For matching to occur, for matching to occur, the tank's pressure must be of such a value as, for matching to occur, the tank's pressure must be of such a value as to present, as to present, a hundred ohms to the amplifier. To the amplifier. Hence, I can say now that RP over RS is equivalent to N squared. According to this calculation, this equation here that we have, that we take this and equate it to this. Therefore, what is our RP? This one was the RP. So to match this RS, what you have to do is, you have to compute this 1000, which is RP, is equivalent to this, over RS. So RS will be a value less than what we need. So to compute this, sorry, change this one to 10 ohms to the amplifier. 10 ohms to the amplifier. So RS is equivalent to 10. Therefore, our N squared will be RP, which is 1,000 over 10. This cancels. Ns n squared is equivalent to 
a hundred and it doesn't have any value because if you are taking ohms divided by the ohms then you will have no unit eh? that is the ratio now uh, so from here once we have this m squared is equivalent to this the question will be now what is the the tans ratio Therefore, the tans ratio will be Rp to Rs is equivalent to N, which is equivalent to 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Because if the number of tans here are 100, we say that in the amplifier, the tans value will be 1,000. So if we take this with a thousand, within the amplifier, let us talk about the amplifier, amplifier, amplifier tons is equivalent to a thousand. Then if, with this, then we shall have a thousand divided by a hundred to give us ten one. Therefore, n equals to 10 to 1 ratios, ratio value. So that makes the end of uh, electronic component property.